shops and I know a bunch of people who collect things and so forth, I'm going to be the point person of a company that offers props. Well, there you go. Now, you've done a lot of that. You have an inventory where it's a point of contact for a producer and say, I need X, Y, Z, A, B, and C. That would be the Iowa production guide. Right. Yep. And that's, that's a self-service opportunity to go through that website and to input you and your company or your services and so forth. What's a, what's a website? Let's state it for the... Uh... It is iowalifechanging.com slash film. <laughs> I've got business cards with that on it, but... Um, and you're yeah, well... Just, just Google my website. Just, just Google Iowa Film Office. It'll come up now. It didn't use to, but um, you can put yourself out there in, in two different you know, rele uh, uh, relevant categories. And, and, and for that matter, if you're a company that's made of an individual, you can do both of those. But anyway, it's a self-service thing. And that is a... Well, one thing about self-service, it's important to make yourself known. Those of you that are familiar with it or not familiar with it, you should get familiar with what Tom and his crew have built at that site. And, and get on the radar. It's absolutely essential because I can't point to you if I don't know you're there, first of all. And second of all, it, it's not, in fact, I don't even think it's legal for me to, to point to somebody without pointing to three at the same time, right? So if I say, if somebody calls up and says, well, I need, I need a ripping electric package, I need a sound package, and so forth, I direct them to those categories in the production guide. And if they say, well, I've looked at those people and I'm not sure who to pick, well, I just have to tell them to go and call you and, and make their decision. Call us. Yeah, that's right. That's Come in. Right. Mark, get the reference. You have, you, have a, you have a comment, Mark, and then I have a question just, for you. Just a real brief comment. Uh, you know, those the, the, the guide is fabulous. There's a lot of opportunities uh, to make a handful of phone calls and learn some things. But meeting some of the filmmakers and even helping find locations. Uh, just uh, a couple days ago, I was helping a couple people do site hunt. and. Uh, they wanted a house, a uh, certain age and uh, look, and we found one, and it actually had a beautiful garden that they said would look just like California. <laughs> and, and I'm going, okay, so that was a gorgeous garden, but it had all these plants that looked to me like they'd only grow in the Midwest, not out there. And that was kind of what fun happened? we had. But you know, I know, I, I'm in film, I, I, can, I can make a lot of background be different and if I want to with whatever program I choose to. But what they also didn't realize is they're looking now and filming in late October. <laughs> you got it. They're going to have to paint everything green or bring in silks to make it work right. I love it. Mark, I have a lot. I had, a, I had a question for you um, as far as action items. What, <coughs> what is it that we should be looking to do as a community to start filling these gaps? You know, as, speaking of legislators, is it about jobs? We have to present things in the terms of, look, if you support this and help us train people, what are the things we need to, to learn and, and communicate to our legislators in the state? I think there are two things. Well, actually three. One is this meeting, we, we need to get everybody who's involved in the industry to get together. Everybody who drives a truck and, every, and people that hire folks to do that and do the negotiations for them, the, the leaders and some of the workers, and try and get more of this conversation going to make sure that you know you're all on the same team. Because if it starts to go away, mm -hmm. then all of those jobs go away. Then we need to make sure that the legislature understands the nature of the types of these jobs there are a lot of men and women in the country that get in a semi in the morning and drive to somewhere. And they stop and they hope to have a ride or a load on the way back. Otherwise, they're sitting on their rear end waiting for the ride back. Those are freelance jobs, just like mine. My wife likes to tease me that at the end of the day when I'm done shooting, I'm an employee again. <laughs> you know what? The legislature doesn't understand that I have a real job. And it's a good job, and I like it. And it makes things change in my community, and it makes change, things change around the subject matters that I get to shoot. And we need to help them understand that these are real jobs. They just act different than some of the other regular eight-hour jobs. Right. That's those two things are really important. We need to make sure they understand the nature of that, and encourage the DED to and the legislature to study the program and really make sure that they understand its workings and the little pieces that need to get, need to get fixed. I'll emphasize the growth thing again.
Has there been any communications with the community colleges in the state to try and work on an academic uh, schedule that perhaps? Not so much curricular conversation, but more uh, uh, custom training. Uh, the, the training that Mark was referring to is from the Iowa Motion Picture Association and their so-called RIP 101 uh, <coughs> workshop and, and hands-on. And that was uh, originally hosted at the Des Area Community College campus before they took it to other community college campuses around the state. And that was that <coughs> traveling uh, workshop was, was funded through a grant from the Department of Economic Development, DED. Um, and so that was the first opportunity for for the community colleges to, to realize that there is an emerging industry here and that they would have the potential for uh, either uh, uh, reviving past courses or just adopting some variation on the BRIC 101 class to, do, to put on either a periodic weekend workshops or possibly to create an entirely new uh, curriculum. So it's a couple of different paths that can go down. The curriculum path is, is uh, that's like a starting a new business. They have to make sure that they can have a steady flow of students through that to, to justify uh, funding an instructor for it, marketing and so forth. But a periodic weekend thing. Seminars or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's a different story. And, and there is some interest behind the scenes. There's a couple of schools really looking at it pretty seriously. And plus, Iowa City, uh, the university here, has a creative film program. Uh, I don't know personally how much of it relates deeply to practical, but there's good reputation here. So. And, and um, to jump in on the University of Iowa's connection there, there are some um, past students who are reaching out to their instructors to say that, you know, hey, look, it worked. I, I got a job. Let's let's try to start some sort of flow here. Yeah. And, you know, and I've spoken to the, uh, uh, the faculty here as well, and there's a bit of a the, the curriculum problem. When, when things are set, they're set for a while, and making changes to those uh, uh, expectations is hard. Um, on the other hand, it's the special things, the, the um, seminars and so forth that are a lot easier. Becky, as a, as a creative, you work in a lot of genres, you work in television, so you, as you look around the environment, do you see some gaps that need to be focused on to transition to fill to make sure from the creative and from the producerial and directorial perspective, the economy and the, the environment is more conducive? Here in Iowa. Yeah, here in Iowa. Yeah, the, the, the very practical things and the things that that, that everybody here has referred to. I mean, the, the biggest thing is is lighting and grip, which I know doesn't sound it doesn't sound as romantic as what you probably thought I would say. But oh, um, and people so and people who know how to light and good electricians. Okay, that's that's really one of the key things here. And also, I have a small indie film, but the bigger it gets, as you guys know, you know, you need a lot of specialty equipment. Um, that's one thing. Um, script supervisors. Um, Iowa needs more script supervisors. It's a great job. It's a, it's a, it's an interesting job, and um, it's it's an easy job to train for. There are very specific places you can go and go through a training program. Describe what a script supervisor. A script supervisor is at the arm of the director through the entire film, every single moment on the set, um, with a very specific. Um, Binder, writing down every shot, every take, what lens was used, how long it was, what I felt, or what the director felt about the take. It's a very critical part of documenting for the editor. And that's a very specific skill. I forgot to mention that in terms of makeup and hair, we had great people from Iowa. That wasn't a problem at all. Um, I think that the costume designers are very talented here. It's just whether they're already booked on theater and stuff. I, I, it's really Thomas so right. So many really good people here come out of theater, and a lot of good actors, very, very fine actors, um, come out of theater in Iowa. So that's, the, that's not a, a really big problem. I think that probably art directors, there could be more and DPs, cinematographers. That that's where there need to be a lot more young people who have some kind of reel that you can look at and, and have some kind of experience that would convince you that they could carry a, a projects like this. Because those those big key roles that require a big commitment and and a, a lot of experience, um, it's harder. Because I think when I was shooting here, I think there were only really two cinematographers who were even in the running or on the list. And, and that, that just wasn't enough. Terry? Yes. 